So how are you doing? It's been a long day, but it's been an amazing day. I have heard amazing ideas, incredible concepts, and I've seen some challenges thrown down. So let me show something here. This is called lichen. Lichen. It's a symbiotic interaction between algae and fungi. fungi. It creates a, a binary being that is able to live in places that neither of them could live alone. It's life, and it lives where life shouldn't be. And this is my daughter. She's a sentient being who lives on the planet Earth. And what you're looking at right there is her breaking through limits that she doesn't know she has. She's touching her first flower. I'm lucky enough to be a part of a company that is looking out to mine asteroids. Or as John Seward said, one of those companies that makes the 21st century look like he, the way he thought it was supposed to be. Being that kind of, uh, in that kind of company, being around those kind of people, I'm often asked, why space? Why space? To me, that translates into why am I here? Why do I exist? And where did that kind of thinking come from? It came from me sitting in front of a TV watching television shows during the same period of time that we thought the world was going to come to an end. Watching Vietnam, watching Nixon, watching the Cold War. Click, Star Trek, click. Oh my God, they're flying in the space. Oh my God, click, and on and on. And in the mind of a kid growing up in the space age, those images, those ideas, those concepts melded together in my head. I was going to be Captain Kirk. I don't know if I would get the green-haired girl, but I was going to be Captain Kirk. I was going to be Luke Skywalker. I was going to be Han Solo. I could be those people. I could make that future happen because I was looking on the screen and I was watching cosmonauts and astronauts in space doing those things. And I knew that that was where they were going. And I was growing up in that generation. At the same time, Galileo, Voyager, shooting out into the solar system. We could do anything. I could do anything. I was part of the first generation, the first arrival of the space generation. Along with some other crazy kids who were watching the same shows, having the same dreams, and staying in school and studying. People like Elon Musk, Paul Allen, people who are now have come back around, having stayed in school, having studied, have taken their money and are investing it in creating a future that they believe they can make happen. And that's where we are right now. That's where this generation stands. We do stand on the shoulders of giants. Giants who did something incredible. They went into space, they went to the moon. Why? Because it's hard. And by the way, when Kennedy said, we go because it's hard. To me, it doesn't mean that it was the engineering or the technology that was hard. We are what is hard. Our limits, overcoming our limits is what is hard to do. It's not about the rocket equation. It's not about physics. We solve those issues every single day. Every day, something that was science fiction, fantasy, or voodoo, a few years before, turns into reality. It's an amazing time, and it's accelerating, and it's getting faster, because we are pushing beyond our limits. After all, what is an astronaut but somebody who didn't believe in their limits? And that is what we as a culture have to do, is to blow out of our limits. We have built a cage around our ideas. We have built a cage around our future that says you cannot. We are telling the generation that exists today that they're going to have less, that they should give up their dreams, that their job is to save a planet that we've screwed up. What a great tomorrow. I am so excited. But you know what's interesting? Is once you break out of 100 miles, as Robert Heinlein said, 
100 miles up and you're halfway to anywhere. Once you get past that line and you start moving out, you've actually entered the rest of the universe. You can go anywhere. You can do anything. Anything becomes possible. Space is an infinite canvas upon which any one of us can paint our own future, can create our own destiny, can realize our own dreams. And it's there, spread above us every night. And just to give us that little extra pull, there's a moon, just close enough so that we can see, oh my God, there are mountains up there. Have you ever watched somebody look through a telescope for the first time? I've seen that happen. I sat on a beach in Sri Lanka at one point with the founders of the International Space University, and we took a rock, and we were sitting there with some native kids, and we asked them, what time does the sun rise? And they knew exactly, because they were the children of fisher people. And we said, what time does the sun set? And they knew exactly. And there were the painted uh, boats sitting there, pushed up by the edge of the jungle. And we're sitting there, and one of us, in a mischievous moment, took a rock, and we shined the, took a flashlight, and we shined it at the rock, and we started to explain that that was the moon. And we took a cigarette lighter and we lit it and we shed. And that was the light of the sun. It was a ball of fire. And the kid who, who, the one kid who spoke English reached over and took that. And then he reached over in, in single ease and started talking to the kid next to him. And the kid was like, no, 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 right. And he talked to him some more and he's like, showed him and he's like, oh my God. In that moment, I watched those children enter the space age. And yeah, we cried. We cried later that night. It was an amazing moment. We, in this field, those of you who came here, who paid however many euros you did to come and sit in this room, did so because you believe, because you share that dream in your own way. You could be at home watching TV. You could be at home watching game shows or so-called reality shows or, or bad news on the cable news networks. But you chose to come here because you, somewhere inside of you, are just like me. You're a 12-year-old, you're an 11-year-old, you're a 10-year-old. You're sitting in front of a TV screen or a movie screen and you believe that something great is there. Yeah, you may have been jaded. Yeah, you may have had too many forms to fill out. Oh my God, you know. Look, I live in a, I'm working in a field where I have to sit down with spreadsheets and we have to sit down and we have to, God forbid, close our business plan. But you know what? To all my friends in the space field, I have to say it's time to come out of the airlock. Come out and admit that you share a dream. And if you do, align yourself with that dream. It is your turn, it is your time to make this happen so that these generations, these young people, have a place to go and a dream to hold on to. Because you know what? The future we're giving them right now is like, okay, here's what we did and here's what you have, and here's where it's going to go. And if you open space, the limitless universe, it goes like that and becomes unlimited. And the future becomes an unlimited place. And you will have the chance in this generation, of all generations, think about it, this is the generation that has inherited the actual machines that could destroy the planet. This generation, of all generations, has the ability to use those same machines to take the seeds of life and spread them into the universe. This generation, right now, has that choice. You know, I have friends in SETI, and they spend a lot of time looking out into the universe trying to find life. They're not finding advanced civilizations. Now, maybe we haven't looked far enough or deep enough, or maybe they're not there. Maybe they didn't make it through this moment. Maybe there are billions and billions of planets out there covered with algae and fungi, but maybe they didn't make it through this moment. We have the chance to take our civilization, to take our culture out into the universe. We have the chance to take the light of life and shine it in worlds now dark. We have the chance to take the seeds of life and plant them on worlds now dead. Think about that. For the first time in the advance of human history out into what we call nature, 
the advance of our technology doesn't mean an attack on that quote-unquote natural ecosystem, but instead will allow us to take life to worlds that have no life. Think about that for a minute. Think about that as something that a child in the future can wake up to as they look up in the sky and they see the trails of rockets going out to worlds unknown. They see lights glimmering on the limbs of the moon and they know that they can catch a ship and go to Mars. What is that going to be? What is that going to mean to them to be a part of a civilization that has chosen the stars? That's what it's all about for me. I want to plant a tree on Mars. I want to see a butterfly on the moon. I want to see a child who lives in space looking back at the earth and saying, that's where I came from. That beautiful, beautiful blue planet. And turning their eyes forward and outward and saying, that's where we're going. We are here to go there. Thank you.